first round. We're going to see one more coming up. We're going to see Game On versus the Dolos. The Dolos. The Dolos. The I think Dolos. it's just Dolos, not the... Dolos? Yes, Dolos. Dolos. Whatever that team name means. Is it, is it Dolos? I think it's Dolos. Dolos. I've been calling him Dolos, and I've been Tweeted me the phonetic spelling <laughs> yeah. of your name, because I really want to know. But Twitter Game On here. and the Dolos, all right? I keep saying the Dolos, because Dolos sounds weird. It does, right? Just saying Dolos. Game On and Dolos. <laughs> But we're just going to stick with it. All right, so what do you have to look forward for this matchup? Okay, so Dolos is a team that I've been saying since the qualifiers, I think, has a the potential to be the dark horse. These guys could be the team that comes out of nowhere and just destroys everybody. Mm -hmm. the, the players on the team are incredibly skilled. Of course, Clerny and Jurgen being on the team. Jurgen, a player that's jumped around from a bunch of different teams, and we all know Clerny from back in the day with Intolerant. Uh, he dominated the scene with Jolts and Nye for a very long time. Yeah. So these are two... There are three very high-skilled players, so to see these guys playing together is going to be very interesting. And, of course, Game On being composed of Mini. Um, oh, gosh. It, it, Mini is on the team, of course. And then there's Ivar, uh, two very good players that kind of haven't been around the scene but came back for the league. Yeah. Uh, Mini, we all know it from Tel Roskme. There's a lot of old boys here, and it'll be very interesting to see how they perform. By the way, pro tip, because you will forget a lot of rosters, as I have a lot in my past. You just, instead of acting like you know them all, just like, yeah, we got Mini on that team. Just go for the one. It Just go, help for, out. All right, Just go for the one. But draft phase is ready, so we're going to see them drafting very soon. Again, it is a blind pick. Single reveal, and we're going to see a double thorn in the first reveal for each team. We almost saw no thorn in North America, and now we've seen a thorn. Three out of the four teams have picked thorn. Yeah. For Europe. We saw a lot of Rygon yesterday, but we're seeing the European teams switch to the thorn. A pick, I think, is much more better or much better than Rygon in the current yeah. meta. Uh, so... As far as what you know that these teams like to play, what supports are we looking for in either of these teams? Uh, you know, of course, when you hear Clarny, you can't help but think Lucy. That's true. Uh, I also think we might see an Ulrich. I know Clarny as a player thinks Ulrich is still in a very strong position. So to see him with mm -hmm. the Thorn wouldn't be too surprising, especially with the way Thorn likes to play. Uh, Jumong being picked up for Dolos. I'm very excited to see that play. Taya. Yeah, game on playing Taya. Ivar, an incredibly good Taya player. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a player that kind of like made his, his announcement to the scene with Taya. So to see him play, it's not too surprising. Don't see a lot of players that make Taya viable, and I think it's, it is a very particular champion with a very particular skill set that doesn't really bleed into many others. With the haste mechanic being very prevalent in her kit, just understanding how to use that timing with the tornado, not having a lot of major escapes, but at the core also being one of the slipperiest range champions. It's really weird. She's only got like one big iframe, and then she has her EXQ as well. Right. But for some reason, she's just, I mean, we know why haste exists, but it's very difficult. But the third pick, Ulrich on both sides. Again, we did see a big hit for him in the patch, but I still think with the right matchup, he's going to be really strong. Yeah, I like the Ulrich with the Thorn especially because, you know, when mm -hmm. Thorn goes in, he commits hard. He only has that one mobility spell in his burrow, so Ulrich being able to back him up is really nice with that EXQ and the favor being applied by his space. Uh, really nice team comps coming out from both sides. Jamong, a little bit rare. We don't see a lot of Jamongs. Uh, and I guess we can try talk through a little bit the struggles of Jamong, why we don't see him so much. He does so much damage, but he has to use, like, four of his abilities to do that a lot. Right, and a lot of the problem with Jumong is he can't really assist his allies as much. He is he is a damage putter outer. Yeah. He just puts out the damage, he does his thing, um, and occasionally if your allies get targeted down, you just can't do much for him. But Jurgen is incredibly good at playing this Jumong, and I expect to see quite a lot of success with the double rain of yeah. arrows against the Thorn and Ulrich. Occasionally you'll see Thorn commit too hard and just eat a double rain of arrows, and uh, it'll be very good for him. And not just that, but he's got a lot of self-sustain, so he really doesn't need yeah. Ulrich a lot of time. He has that EXM1, and he can just farm health in any 1v1 situation. So if he finds himself against Taya, he you know if you can land it against the hasted Taya, that's the hardest part. Yeah, yeah. But again, remember there were predictions you guys could do prior to this broadcast starting. So let's see what you guys thought. Let's see what the viewers thought between Game On and Dolos. Again, so close. Really, not a lot of landslides. And the biggest we saw in North America was seventy-one twenty-nine. Yeah, I think it was in favor of Space Station Gaming, who then ended up losing. Yeah. But yeah, over here is incredibly close. And you know, I, I can't help but agree with them that this one's kind of hard to call. I would, however, lean in the favor of Dolos, as I think these players are a little bit more well prepared. And uh, I think seeing your nightmare on Thorn on the side of Dolos yeah. is pretty scary. Your nightmare has been an incredible melee player. I've seen him quite a lot in the competitive scene, uh, especially when Thorn first came out. Yes. He was just oppressive. He was there disgusting. Was <laughs> he did so much on him. And, and Thorn is a very interesting champion to play against because there's really just a couple of big things. He's only got his one big eye for him, his space bar. Right. And he's one of two champions that can control their space bar as they go. It's going to be him and Destiny. Mm -hmm. Destiny can roll around on a little ball, go wherever she wants. Thorn can just underground. And he's always going to try and touch as many people as possible if he builds the battle right to deal 10 damage when he's underneath you. Right. And you can't do anything about it because it's not worth spacing. And you're going to take the damage, and that's okay. 
Sort of. So long as you don't get knocked up and then M1'd afterwards. <laughs> yeah, It is much. a lot of burst damage. Now, he did have that big change that we saw where he can't get the free M1 right after, which I think was a really... I mean, it, it felt good for me going against Thorns, and it didn't feel great for Thorn mains. Yeah, absolutely. No, one, Nobody liked eating that free 37 damage, but that's not the case anymore as you can no longer connect a free M1. And on the topic of this Thorn, I really like this um, Ulrich pick for Clarny as, as he has your Nightmare on Thorn simply because of the nature of your Nightmare. This dude plays so aggressive, he always wants to go in, and to be able to have that Ulrich backing him up, I think this is exactly where you want to put your star player in, like your Nightmare. And while we do usually see Clarny on range supports, I think just having the mind of a support is going to be just as good here. So, Dolos and Game On, our second match of the day. Said your Nightmare wanted to go in there. He's just going to dump a lot of cooldowns into a shield. Yeah, both teams playing very patiently to start this one off. Jurgen fishing for an M2 there, but he has actually taken quite a bit of damage. Has to black arrow that pull too. Red team does have mid control though. We'll see if they get this orb. A lot of glowy, a lot of favor. Both these orcs are going to make sure they have favor on almost everybody. But mm. Mini, with his M1, I think is going to secure that orb for game on. The knock up from Thorn. Both using the R's as the I frames. Oh. And out of nowhere, he just gets shredded. Mini has to play so defensively now, getting so low. Your Nightmare is not letting him go anywhere. The EX space from the Ulrich and Blue going to come out, get him far away. The Dead Roots is the answer, though. Oh my god, look at this. We're actually going to see Your Nightmare getting so low. The ultimate from Taya is down. Trying to help, try and take out just one. Ulrich has to use an iframe, but he misses the R. He's going to find space and help in his range support, or I guess not his support, but Jurgen, who's got an ultimate, he's just been running around M1ing everybody, dealing so much damage. Oh my god, he finally goes down your nightmare, hanging on by the skin of his teeth for what seemed like eternity. Now the blue team, they could still lose this one, and they oh might my as god! Ivar, Ivar just gets beat down by that uh, M2 from Jurgen. Now this orb is incredibly important. Blue team does have mid control. The ultimate be gonna be thrown out by Clarny though, and the damage on Mini is massive. They might be able to find the kill here, but the EX space, beautifully done by Lumi to get his ally out of that situation. Tell me you saw that pull M2 that Jurgen flicked over as he got pulled in from that thorn. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah, Jurgen an absolute monster here. The Aegis throw gonna be come out in from Mini as the return, but Jurgen still sitting so healthy. I felt like that ultimate throw was Kind of a desperate ploy. They really didn't line up any damage off of it. He could have gotten an M1, but looks like oh, Clarny might just go Clarny. down. He does. Beautiful play from Lumi. Lumi absolutely playing out of his mind to finish this one off as he helped save Mini early on, and he finds the kill on Clarny. Damn, look at Lumi go. If anyone gets caught by Jurgen right now, though, he, they will be a goner. The health from either of them is easily burstable from a Jamong, but they need to work together right now. There's an ultimate right now for Lumi, and I think Jurgen knows that he's being patient. There's the Radiant Shield, the ultimate. I <laughs> framed Ulrich! He does get the kill! Wow! That Dragon Slayer gonna help him find the kill, but now left without any energy and no Black Arrow. You're gonna, gonna go down. I couldn't actually tell what happened. I guess the R came out just before yes. he got smacked a little bit missed timing on that. It is so difficult to know the timing on the Jamong Ultimate because he can hold it for so long and let go whenever he wants. Game on will take the first round in a very long and grueling round. Yeah, what a nuts round that was. Game on coming out and taking four orbs to zero. The Dolos really lacking in terms of orb control. And you know, that's something that happens with this team sometimes. Your Nightmare plays so incredibly ag aggressive that sometimes they just lose track of the objectives. That early game going to be slow with as many melees as there are in this. But Taya, if she was able to stay alive a little bit longer, she might have been able to really try and pull it in their favor. But they oh. also know to hunt her down. Look at that. That X-Strike was absolutely massive. Put Jurgen on the back foot very early, down to only 117 HP, really not where you want to be. Yeah, but Taya took almost as much health. Your Nightmare trying to hunt down Taya. Oh no, not any value out of that space bar from Clarny either, because Your Nightmare had just space barred the one iframe he has. Thorn trying to hunt down Taya. Now he's in no man's land. He's got no support, and they know they want to try and take down Jamong. The damage he was able to output last time with no answer. Jurgen just getting walked at by two characters of game on. The aggression is unrelenting. The ultimate going to come out from your nightmare, and they do secure the orb. Dolos now up 2 0, but they're still down 20% HP. Dorn trying to get an E. A little bit of spacing, a little bit of slow mid game right now. There's an ultimate from Ulrich, at least one of them. Does it come back? I think it may have smacked the other Ulrich on the way back. They're so far behind, though, Carpet. Look at the HP pool of the players in red. Jurgen only sitting at 63. Your Nightmare at 90 on the Initiator. He's going in now, but he's getting absolutely ruined by this Taya, but she gets caught. She gets rooted by the trap while alting, and she might go down here. The burst from Jurgen is absolutely massive, but he's not able to quite find the kill. Clarny's trying to hunt that down. He spent a lot for it. There's going to be the R to give him some time to space himself from Lumi. 
The range on range combat. Taya goes down, but the Thorn will die in response. And now we will see Jamong follow suit. And the the story of these rounds are very good openings from Game On. That game or that round we saw Game On open with a sick X strike on a black arrowed um, Jumong. The Jumong tried to space away from something else, but ended up eating a X strike from Ivar, and that really just set up Game On to play pretty aggressively. Your Nightmare also not having the best time in these rounds. A beautiful play from Mini and Lumi to punish the Thorn when he goes in. And Ivar knew that he was going to take some damage. He saw your Nightmare coming in and opted. You know what? I still want to put this damage onto Jurgen. I think I'll be able to get this trade. And he came out about. 20 health ahead, even though he did take some himself, but that is knowing the trade. Your Nightmare wants to get aggressive. An early entangle and some damage on to Mini. Interesting play here is Ivar getting very split. Playing up against the Thorn, he's going to miss that X Strike. A little bit unfortunate, but uh, Blue Team Thorn, uh -oh. Lumi's getting Lumi's got almost even nothing, harder. yeah. There comes the Tornado, but it's just going to land right into a space bar from Thorn. Mm. Mini knew not to. Oh my. Beautiful. Getting so dangerous here in this corner. The ultimate from one thorn now. Will we see it even just as a mobility potential? Here it comes, but it finds almost no value in damage. Yeah, things looking a little bit dicey here, but the blue team have been able to stabilize in mid. This next orb spawning in five seconds. This could be a game changer for game on. The EX shield from Clarny. Going to heal up his team quite a bit. Mm. Blue team will secure that orb. Ultimate from Thorn. Ooh, a nice pull onto Mini, forcing him to space defensively, not able to get that favor on any of his allies. And now his allies might get run down. The Dragon Slayer going to come out. Lumi gets bursted hard by Jurgen, but they're not able to find the kill. The Entangle stops just that one more M1 from Jamong that would have potentially taken out Lumi. But now look at how low he is. Oh, man. They were able to pull the orb. That's huge for them. Yeah. They secured the third orb in a row. Clorny almost walking into that shield. Things looking pretty good here for Adolos as Jurgen is absolutely putting out so much damage. The Dead Roots is gonna come out from Lumi, but they're not gonna catch anybody in it. The Dragon Slayer hits too, and they finally find the kill on Mini. Oh my gosh, Jurgen with two massive Dragon Slayers this round, ending up hitting four people in total with two casts. But right now, an ultimate, is she gonna be able to take somebody down? No, the EX space oh, to try and break it, but he him. finds her. That's insane, Ivar was able, uh, actually able to find your nightmare through that, but I think she used too many cooldowns. She's gonna break line of sight. Gets an M2, building up some more energy. Yeah, but she, she just has no sustain. There's nothing she can do against this. Yeah, this is looking pretty tough here. She's trying to farm up energy to get that tornado, but at the end of the day, she wasn't able to get to that 25 mark. And Dolos, swing back in round three. Really nice play from Jurgen this round. He, like I mentioned, his Dragon Slayers were absolutely round changing. He hit four people in total with two casts. If you put out that much damage as a Jumong, you're generally just going to have a lot of success. Now, we're seeing something in this round, that, or just in this match in general, we hadn't seen previously. And it's um, a little bit of mid-game, a little bit of slowing down. A lot of times we just kind of saw things ramp up and up and up and up and right. up. But it's, I think it, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen when you have four melees. Yes. Because there's just going to be times where you're out of range because you need to space out, you need to get your heals up. So it is definitely giving these, these players a little bit more time to try and think mid-match. Ooh, what a beautiful pull here from Lumi to start this off. Getting a double pull, for forcing out some outs. Jurgen, he does have those three stacks, though, on his black arrow. Red team's able to make it back, and the HP pool is completely even. Standing their ground, trying to get the trade. Game on, even though they lost some early. Look at the pain right now they're putting onto your nightmare. Even oh with the orb, God. he only has about 90 max health right now. He is able to get these green shards, heal up a little bit. 12 max HP being returned to him, but still he's very low carpet. O under 100 HP now. A Dragon Slayer coming out. We saw that turn the tide last round, but it wasn't able to this round. And the Dead Roots is going to come out from your nightmare, getting a decent amount of damage, but the Tornado is available for many. Nice play from Ivar to keep his ally alive. He had to use the Dead Roots. Mostly for mobility, but he did find quite a lot of value up in that corner. Two blue players being caught there with him. Eye framing with an R, knocking up Jurgen. Right now, Ulrich spaced oh. out. Oh, he's all alone! Beautiful pull. Your Man. nightmare, yeah. Luminary absolutely popping off on the Thorn this round, getting so many huge pulls. A double pull to start things off, and this final pull on your nightmare to get the kill. The speed burrow on Lumi. Just trying to get a little bit of damage. Clarny and Jurgen, I mean. With the meter that they have right now and the meter they're up against mixed with the health pool, this is looking very, very difficult and even more difficult now. Yes, in a 1v3, Jurgen's going to have a hard time here. He will finally go down. I'm very impressed with the team play coming out from game on here. A lot of people going into this event thought they might be one of the lower tier teams, but they're playing so impressively, playing so together as a unit. We saw a great tornado from Ivar to save Mini in the middle of the game. Mm -hmm. These guys are playing like a team, and it's really affecting this round score. I think what's super cool to watch for me is them standing their ground and, ac and accepting that they're going to take some damage yeah. sometimes. When you see Taya saving that tornado because she knows her teammate might 
might need it more often. Or when you see her wait for that X strike, knowing, you know what? Fine, Thorn. You can come and smack me a couple times, but I'm about to just do as much damage onto your Jumong. And my Thorn's next to him, so it's going to be worth the trade. So standing their ground and understanding means they probably have a lot of good communication going on right now. Absolutely. A really poor start here from your Nightmare. Not where he wants to be. He's forced to burrow all the way back to his team. And game on, a huge X strike coming out of Ivar. It lands onto Clerny. This is such a snowball -y round. It's looking like game on might just run over them. This would be a really big round for them to take. Who's going to get this orb? Game on, we're able to sneak that. It looks like just got walked up by Ulrich, got the M1. So Mini was able to take it. Things looking so good here as your Nightmare used the Barb Husky has no burrow oh. now. Nothing left. The EXM2 coming out from Lumi. Big damage. The Dragon Slayer's the return though, and Jurgen popping off, finding so much damage in return. The double or the EX space. Sick play from Lumi to get his allies out of that double rain of arrows. So much just happened in the last 30 seconds. That Dragon Slayer saved them from so much, and now the end cap. Will it get lined up by more? Your Nightmare trying to get some sustain with his M2s. Ooh, another, another Dragon Slayer finding so much value. Even almost through that shield, almost going down. Luminary. Ooh. Oh Ultimate my be god! Out. The Reign of Arrows is going to take him down! Thorn actually almost went into it and he's going to go down too. Dolos! More Dragon Slayer plays! Carpet, where do I start? That round so incredibly back and forth that I even mentioned in the middle of it, it looked like Game On might just snowball based off the opener. They got such a significant chunk of HP out of Dolos, and they got the first orb, which is very important. But a massive Dragon Slayer from Jurgen once again, stunning two people for up to two seconds, getting so much damage out on him in return in that little amount of time. Dolos sneaking that one out. You talked about the Reign of Arrows potentially coming out on this double melee, but who would have thought it would have been Dragon Slayers more often? Yeah, who would have thought we would be seeing the Dragon Slayer turning the tides of this game? An absolutely incredible play from Jurgen, going against all conventional Jumong play. Two rounds away from taking it. Game on. Want to try and keep the momentum, or at least push it back in their favor, but Dolos. They're scrappy, and, but they're taking the rounds and trying to bring it back. Oh, look at Luminary <laughs> down bottom. Forced to barb husk himself, and he gets a tornado. That leaves Game On without a lot of defensive abilities. They have to play pretty safe here, Carpet. Your Nightmare took almost as many trades, and that orb is going to go to Game On again. Dolo struggling for this orb control. Barbed husk coming out from your Nightmare and Space Bar. So he's going to waste some time now. He needs to reset his cooldowns. And that's when Game On's going to try and close the gap. Ultimates right now on both sides. Oh, down bottom, a huge burst of damage coming out onto your Nightmare, but he is able to get back with his team. This orb is huge. A beautiful pull from Luminary secures it for his team. The Dragon Slayer, it's going to land on the mini, but he doesn't pin it against anybody else, and now the X-Strike is a return. You're going to take a big burst of damage, and your Nightmare not doing much better. But as we know, your Nightmare building up ultimate, and Dolos will do whatever it takes for that win. Favor and the heal shield. He's got ultimate now as well. They could potentially turn this around with the help of Jurgen and the damage that he has. But these pulls right now, the timing from game on, they get orb after orb to keep it in their favor. Yeah, I couldn't agree anymore, Carpet. These orbs are absolutely massive. Your Nightmare getting so low. If you sneeze on him, he might die. And the in cap comes out. The barbed husk is available, but so much burst damage coming out. This double rain of errors is doing massive damage. Jurgen putting out so much to help his ally. Your Nightmare just saving his <gasps> ultimate oh, and his base property. He, he doesn't get down. He doesn't. They need this kill here. They need to find the kill on Mini. They're committing so hard that it's looking like they're not going to be able to get it, though. The Aegis throw from Clerny is going to miss, and this is such an unfortunate situation for Dolos. It looks like they might be able to take it, but now game on is reset. Dolos need to grab this orb. This is going to be a big part for them. They need to build up the energy. It's the burst that's going to do it for them. They can either take down Ulrich or they can take down Taya. They need to avoid Lumi at all costs. He's building up his ultimate as well. Ooh, a nice entangling roost to slow down the roll of the Jumong. The EXQ from Clarny going to come out, but still, this is not looking great. Prowl is now down, but the Reign of Arrows is out. There's Burrow. This is it. Game on and trying to close these gaps. There's the ultimate. Jumong goes down, which leaves Ulrich all alone, and he's not a damage dealer. Pretty sure it's going to be it for Clarny. Game on now. One round away. Man, we talked about. I talked about earlier on how the Jumong doesn't have a lot to aid his allies. We saw in that situation what the Jumong can bring to the table. However, he just pumped out so much damage with that double rain of arrows when the when Game On hard committed onto your nightmare. But unfortunately, in this situation, it wasn't quite able to work out. Mini with a beautiful charge M1 gets the stun on your nightmare as he tries to cast his ultimate at the end, and your nightmare gonna go down. I almost feel like this is a team comp, as far as Dolos is concerned. To to literally have kill baits, mm. where you just, if your name is pretty low,
put him in what they think is a risky situation, so they dedicate in. Jamong just does everything he can, and Clerny just dumps all of his cooldowns to keep him alive, and you hope the trade works out in your favor. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way they're playing this here. Jurgen uh, kind of caught out to start this one off, though. He uses the Prowl to play a little bit safely, but game on, doing pretty well here. It looks a little bit worse, but again, a double pull into his space. Look at how low Jurgen is. He hasn't been able to reset yet. He does secure Noah for his team, so it might not be great for him, but it's going to be better for his team. He snags a couple greens up top, and now Luminary is getting pretty low. He has to back down space bar to retreat. Two ultimates for Dolos. That orb could pay huge for them. Yeah, beautiful pressure here onto Ivar coming out of your Nightmare. The Dead Roots is the answer, but he's not going to find too much damage. Luminary using his as well. Both Thorn Alts being used in parallel lines, but neither getting too much value. The separation right now, your nightmare, as you said, playing so aggressive, but another orb for Dolos. They've struggled with it up until now, but this round is going in their favor, and you can see it paying dividends. Yeah, and look at the pressure here from Dolos as they hold the choke mid, but as I say, that game on pushes in and finds a lot of damage carpet. They're getting split up. This is where it gets tough. Jurgen in the back line can't take too much damage, but Lumi's getting so low, it's going to be tough for him to engage, especially with Dolos having mid control again. They're going to take the greens. So much recovered health right now, even if it looks like Game On are winning these trades. They're going to be so burstable with a fully energied, en energized, I think I'm going to go with. Fully energized Jurgen. Yeah, man, and we saw those Dead Roots earlier on having such a high impact. We'll see if another one finishes this game out. The Dead Roots are going to be, or the Burrow going to be used, and that leaves Lumi open. Jurgen going to miss his ultimate, but now the cooldown rotation so heavily in favor of Dolos. Blue team secure an orb, Luminary. Looking so low, he retreated, but he was able to snag an orb. In the meantime, his pulls have been phenomenal. There's the entangle. This is the time you engage. Thorn, Lumi used his space bar, thinking they were going to go in. He tried to be predictive, but now he's down a cooldown. It's going to slow down this game just a little oh, bit longer. Wow. <gasps> Jurgen, so unbelievably low. That Taya damage, absolutely massive, but as is the Jumongs, Mini getting so low, forced to commit all his abilities on himself. Also, the Barb Tusk and the Tornado use, that leaves Blue Team incredibly open. They have no more outs. They might just go down here, but they find the kill on your Nightmare in the meantime. Once again, this Jumong needs to find the kill, but Ivar dodges, and the Dragon Slayer is not going to be able to come out. Jurgen goes down, as does Clerny. Game on, take this game. Mini had, I believe, what, five health for so long. Yeah, yeah. He got Barb Tusk, he used his R as an iframe, then he got Tornado, then he EX spaced away. Yeah. He was just untouchable for probably seven plus seconds. It was so frustrating to watch for the side of their opponents. They wanted it so bad. They needed that kill. They'd already put so many cooldowns into the trade. At that point, they've taken the health, but if they can get a kill, it's worth it. But they weren't able to in game on, keep the lead three rounds in their favor, and they will take this map. This is one of the bigger upsets that I would have uh, seen happening. I'm pretty surprised by this outcome, but it really comes to show how you can't count anybody out here. Mm -hmm. All of these teams are here to play. They're all incredibly practiced, and you could really see the team play coming out from game on there. They would all hard commit onto one character, and Jurgen, he tried to return the damage while your Nightmare was getting focused down, but all three characters with such precise focus, they were constantly able to find the kill on your Nightmare before anybody on Game On would go down. And there was still enough pressure on that Jumong so that he couldn't just free reign, do whatever he wanted. Yes. We saw early on is when they tried to get the pokes on him so that he couldn't just do whatever he wanted and feel... he Because you want to be selective with that Prowl still, because you know that an Ulrich and a Thorn can just show up and you're, there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. So he had to be very selective with his Prowl. They do just enough damage to him early on that he had to think twice. He couldn't just let himself take trades. So there were some times where he wanted to help and deal more damage, but had already spent too many cooldowns avoiding more damage. So I, you know, just that awareness to be able to keep that up. I like seeing the change of pace. The, the quad melee, having two on each side, letting this, you know, where they have to separate reset abilities. We use the term reset a lot. And for, again, if you are new to watching this, everything is cooldown based. There is no mana. So when we say reset, it means that they've used three or four of their abilities, and they want to just kind of space out from the fight and let all those cooldowns come back. It lets them have a little more toolkits because all this game is about using your abilities in the right order to be able to get the most value. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. I get kind of lost in my jargon sometimes, but <laughs> incredibly important to remember that, yeah, that is uh, resetting, and it's very important in this game. The pace of the game is an uh, incredibly important thing that both teams really need to respect, and when you see a team be able to reset towards mid and heal up a little bit and mm -hmm. get that mid orb, it's when you'll really see them be successful. There were a lot of moments that we freaked out, but there's one in particular. Everybody engaged, and we saw one of the many Dragon Slayers that landed. Oh, but yeah. this one, special, with Reign of Arrows, everything coming down at the same time, and it saved his team from so much damage. It ended up turning that round, I believe, in their favor. Yeah, it's exactly like we talked about and have been talking about. Your Nightmare being focused down by all three characters. A beautiful pull from him here gets the Dragon Slayer onto two from Jurgen. 
Um, but this is just really symptomatic of how this game went. Blue team able to f uh, focus down so much damage onto one character while Jurgen tried to respond with his own damage. But in most of these rounds, it simply wasn't enough. Jurgen couldn't put out enough damage in return. And he, I, uh, uh, Jamong needs so much energy yes. a lot of times to be able to dish out that damage between EXM2, EXM1. Uh, uh, you don't need it for Reign of Arrows. But in, in just in the scheme of when he wants to dish damage, he needs to usually dump around 50% energy. So if he doesn't have that or maybe can't use that because he wants to keep his Prowl up or, or whatever, because if you don't have anything for Prowl, then you're in a really tight spot. Right. So need all the circumstances that had to work out for him. He had to have energy, had to have enough health to be able to dedicate maybe a couple of trades because Ty might be poking at him from a distance. Yep. And also being in the right position. It happened a couple times, but not enough for them to take the match. Yeah. So... That is uh, going to be the end of that match. There's a couple things we want to talk about before we go on a quick break. Um, there's one that I mentioned uh, yesterday.